Computer technology has been a part of modern schools for over two decades now, and a new wave of schools are moving this from computer labs directly into the hands of students in classrooms. Why not use technology to help students learn at their own level, at their own pace, and at their own standard? Let's let learners choose how they want their class to be. Apollo Hi, I'm Alex Bunting and this is my Cotail final project. My goal for this project was to use technology to change my unit into a flexible, differentiated and choice-driven module, with students choosing when and where to learn. In a traditional model of teaching, this was difficult, even with small classes. But with one-on-one -on -one device schools becoming more common, technology provides a way to transform our classes to deliver on all these things. The goals of this project were to create more autonomous learners, allow students to work at their own pace, enable students to extend their learning, free me up to work with students in need, and to give choice in how and what students learn. On the SAMA model, we were really looking for transformative practices, either looking at modification and specifically looking for redefinition of tasks to really transform how students are learning. Students being able to work at their own pace was a core ideal for Apollo. All students learn at different rates, as some need more time than others to understand concepts. This picture shows the course outline. The red blocks indicate the units that were completed by all students. That means all of the students completed up to the medium difficulty material. Some students, however, found it difficult to access the higher level material with 2 and 18 students respectively not completing the harder units. This is expected within a mixed ability class, however the benefit of Apollo is that those students who struggled to access the more difficult material had more time to practice the earlier material. Um, for me it's also the same with Annie, but then um, I'm a bit of a slow learner so I prefer Apollo because if I need to work on something then I can just always go back and look at it and take my time to do something because sometimes I fall behind in class and yeah. I like the option of like talking with having sort of the time so you can manage yourself and also have spend those times talking with other people if I, I want to discuss or something and you can sit down you can do it for a moment and you can do something else for a moment and that's more fun mm -hmm. For me, the best thing about it was that you could go at your own pace, you could go as fast as you like or as slow as you like, and we were also surrounded by people who were doing the same thing, so it was easier to ask questions compared to normal. This was a big strength for Apollo, and redefined the classroom experience. Another goal of Apollo was to help students extend their learning. This was accomplished through the use of optional units easier ones to help support prior learning or harder ones to help students extend their learning past the compulsory material. Most students in the class attempted at least one optional module. Most elected to take an easy unit to help with the compulsory material, however a few students did delve into the harder content to push and extend their learning. It depends for which topic it is like uh, in topics I was more interested in, I would talk to other people more about it, but then in the topics I wasn't as much interested in, I wouldn't really care much about the video. I will just like skim through it and like make uh, pretty bad notes. When you teach in front of the entire class, we really have to think harder because everything's written in front of us on Apollo, so I don't, we don't get to really go deeper, but when you teach, sometimes when people ask for challenges or what if you change this number, it's a lot. You learn so many things that way. Yeah. The optional units, I think um, being the lazy person that I am, I, don't, I didn't look into any of them. I looked into one by accident because I, I didn't see the optional there. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think those should be 
a more inclusive or something like that because I think those will also help students out on the test to get you know a higher grade. Another aim of Apollo was to free me up to work with students who needed my assistance more. This meant students needed to work more with one another than they normally would do. This was done in several ways. The first way was via a peer assessment section to the website. This meant that students could request their own work to be assessed by other students, but also allowed them to look at other students' work. They could leave feedback for one another to help each other build their knowledge. This is a handy tool for the teacher too, who can look at students' work at any time from wherever they are. The other way peer collaboration was encouraged was via a Get Help button and a Give Help button. This was designed so that when pushed, it would send students to other parts of the room where similarly stuck students might be getting help from one another. In the end though, students were reluctant to move, and so the table system as pictured broke down. Instead, at the start of each class, the students would pick a table depending upon where they were in the topic. We needed to move the tables a few times to accommodate bigger groups, but this really encouraged a lot more peer collaboration. In the final survey at the end of the topic, it became clear that some of the methods used to encourage peer collaboration had failed, with the peer assessment buttons being used infrequently and the get help give help button being used almost never. The amount of feedback given on other students' work was low, and very few students were confident giving their peers a rating on their feedback. Despite this, the observed peer collaboration was at times phenomenal. Seeing students explain difficult concepts to other students when I have taught them nothing about the subject, yet only directed their learning, was incredible to see. This was considered a main strength by the special ed teacher that works with one of our classes. The fact that students can learn to work with one another, whilst leaving the teacher free to work with those who are more in need, was seen as a big positive. Maybe they're just... Maybe they just forgot, or they're lazy, they want to progress as much as they can. They don't really find the need to help others or anything, you know. Some people are really, I guess, determined and they want to figure something out completely on their own so that they don't feel like they're wrong when someone else is looking at their work. I guess it's just the pride sometimes. I believe giving students choice in how they learn is a very important part of modern education. Giving ownership of tasks helps build motivation, and at the end of the day, how they learn matters less than how well they learn. Apollo addressed this by providing different options in each unit for ways they could learn. They could experiment in the lab, they could use FET simulations to experiment online, they could practice equations, they could make notes on videos, and they could use flashcards to help test their knowledge. When they did this was up to them, and all students used the time in different ways. Definitely, because when I need to go back to a concept, I can choose, oh, do I want to do the lab like all over again? I look at the math, I look at vocab with the flashcards, and I really get to personalize what I learn. That's what's really good about it. Yeah. Um, you can look through lab answers. You can look um, to peer assessments to, to your peers, see what they put down, see compare your answer with their so. Like there's a topic and there's different videos, experiments, simulations, and uh, flashcards, and uh, the work section, and you could ask talk to other people for help, you see what others, others did as well. So um, I thought definitely it, was, it helped a lot in my learning. One of the ways I wanted Apollo to be different was to emphasize much more peer and self-assessment. This would force students to reflect more upon their own work and in turn I hoped this would lead to a greater standard of work. 
Each unit on Apollo had objectives to meet, and students would rank themselves on a 1 to 5 scale of how well they think they met that objective. They could change this at any time. In order to progress through the topic, they needed an average of 3 out of 5 for all objectives on a level. Peer assessment was voluntary, but encouraged, and meant students could see the answers or notes other students had written for every activity. There's no test at the end where you can check the understanding, so the only way to tell if you, can, if you learned anything was to look up the comments from other people, but sometimes it weren't as helpful, so mm -hmm. that was the hardest thing. Mm -hmm. The smaller test that we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. that would kind of be the equivalent of the Friday quizzes, mm -hmm. as well as the um, discussion of the quick questions yeah, yeah. in the beginning of class. The final question we ask in this project is, did Apollo redefine the students' learning experience? I believe it was. Watching students explain complex problems to other students and then using experimental simulation to help their explanation was impressive to see. For me, the most transformative element was that I felt so much more effective as a teacher. I only went where I was needed and working with single students or small groups made the learning experience much easier. Students repeated experiments and went back when they needed to review a concept to move on faster. In comparison to the old unit, this was a more enthusiastic and lively learning environment. Students still found the work hard, but they found it easier to find activities to help them and had more time to get help. The big improvements all centered around the lack of formal structure. For example, students found it difficult to structure themselves to get help, but worked more effectively when we redesigned the classroom every lesson. Students wanted formal assessment as they struggled to assess themselves, or found other students to be too unreliable. In conclusion, I'm really happy that I took on this challenging project. The students appeared to really enjoy the lessons, and they learned a lot in the process. I believe that this is a step forwards in a more student-centered classroom, using technology to allow rapid adaptation to curriculum to individual student needs.